So this is an important day for the American people and for the future of American science. Today, uh, President Obama will rescind uh, the, the limits on embryonic stem cell research that were created by President Bush in 2001. Now, these limits have meant that uh, federal funds on embryonic stem cell research could only be used for what is now 21 embryonic stem cell lines, uh, even though scientists say that they need hundreds, if not thousands, of more lines to make the kinds of advances that we need to address basic diseases from which millions of Americans uh, suffer. The crucial change in the rules will allow NIH funding to be applied to many more lines of human embryonic stem cells so that the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, can do the job that it's really the best at doing in the country, which is coordinating work among, among many different laboratories, among many different universities, so that work is not redundant, and also helping the states coordinate their work so that the states can begin to benefit from the economic opportunities as well as benefiting medical science, which is part of the mission of the state university system. In addition, President Obama will release a memo today that instructs the federal government to ensure that only the best evidence-based science is used as the foundation of government policy. And that in itself will be a, a big change from the last eight years when people have been coming out of the federal government uh, like a former Surgeon General and saying that under President Bush he was unable to say things that he felt he really needed to say to benefit the public health. In 2001, President Bush imposed pretty strict limits on human embryonic stem cell research in terms of the funding that the federal government could give for this very promising line of work. Human embryonic stem cells have the ability to form any cell in the human body. In principle that means that if you got the cells to work in a certain way, they could replace disease tissue or aid disease tissue in any system in the human body that was malfunctioning, like a pancreas or a heart or a liver or a spinal cord. That's one possibility for embryonic stem cells. Another is that we could find more efficient ways and safer ways to develop new drugs using cells in the laboratory instead of putting experimental drugs in people. And yet a third, and maybe the most important, is to understand the basic genetics of disease at the very beginnings of human life so that we can get some clues as to how to address serious diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's that might only affect us in our sixth, seventh, or eighth decade of life, but which already are beginning to form very early on in our cells. So what we will see in the future, I think, is um, many more human embryonic stem cell lines that will be available for this kind of research, for drug development, for basic science, and in some cases even putting these cells into human participants in research. This is part of what scientists call re regenerative medicine, the idea of using our cells to heal ourselves instead of, of drugs and surgery or in many cases just waiting for the disease process to continue. This is a new way of doing medicine. This will be 21st century medicine. And it means that we're now in a position to build uh, not only the medicine of the future, but the, the biotechnology of the future. Half of America's economic growth since World War II has been based on science and technology. The rest of the world has been moving forward, Southeast Asia, the United Kingdom, Europe in many cases. We need to be part of this. We need to ensure that we continue to be the world leader in biotechnology, and the, 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 the future of human embryonic stem cell research is a critical part of that.